WNDS Sports presents Candlepin Stars and Strikes, featuring the best Candlepin bowlers from all over New England, and now in our 14th season. Your hosts for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Dick Lutz and Mike Morris. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV 50 from Lita Lanes in Nashua. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. It is week two of our sixth series with the ultimate winner of advancing on to the Tournament of Champions at the end of the season. And last week, we had an exciting match go right down to the wire. Yeah, Dick, it wasn't an especially high-scoring match, but it was very close. Jim Orlandi with a, a late surge in both the second and third games almost overcame Bob Whitcomb, but it wasn't to be, and Bob Whitcomb is back for his second week now. So Seed held last week with the fourth seed, Whitcomb prevailing, and he'll meet number three seed, Neil Goslin here this afternoon. Let's meet the bowlers for this afternoon's match. First, our fourth seed, Bob Whitcomb from Weymouth, Massachusetts. Yes, returning for his second consecutive week. His average is 125. High single, 199. He's got a high triple of 489. He does his bowling at the East Weymouth Bowl away. And he advanced last week by beating Jim Orlandi 364 to 346. And he'll be taking on our third seed, Neil Goslin from Lynn, Massachusetts. And he's been there. He's been here, Dick, uh, 14 times so far on TV 50. Average is 122. He's got a high single of 210. High triple of 459, and he bowls with the Morgan boys and lots of other well-known names at the Lucky Strike Center in Lynn. So that sets the scene for this afternoon's match between Neil Goslin and Bob Whitcomb as we continue with Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV 50. Well, we started with five bowlers in this step ladder series, and we are down to four. We are indeed. Bob Whitcomb, of course, came in at a 656. Neil Goslin at 664 as we work our way toward the top. Next week, Scott Creighton will be here. And the top seed is Rob Burkeel, who had 690 impressive scores, but bunched fairly closely together from top to bottom. Our first bowler this afternoon, Bob Whitcomb from Weymouth, Massachusetts. Another good crowd on hand here at Lita Lanes in Nashua. Well, the spread eagle is a fine how do you do <laughs> to begin the match. Leaving still the two, or rather the three and the seven. And an eight box to start out. He ended up winning last week by. Now well, there's a strike. About 18 pins. 18 pins. But it was a lot closer than that heading down the stretch as you watch the replay of the strike by Whitcomb. Yeah, it was never really a, a match that was more than, I think maybe 20 pins was the top margin at any point last week. And our first look at Neil Goslin. Not his first appearance on Channel 50. He's been on some 14 times, including the last Tournament of Champions. Losing to Peter Flynn by four pins, 408 to 404. He begins with a seven. He bowls out of the lucky strike lanes in Lynn. Lynn, of course, a real hotbed for Candlepin Bowling. Has been forever. That's for sure. Has a high single of 210, which is a house record at the Portsmouth Bowlerama, which was bowled in a TB50 roll-off. To the best of my knowledge, there's never been a game over 200 uh, in the 14-plus year history of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. I don't think anybody's hit 200 on TV. Anyway. Tough start for Goslin with 15 through two boxes, and he's up against a spare by Whitcomb in the second box. Bob Whitcomb from Weymouth. Bowls out of the easy Weymouth bowl away. East Weymouth. Is that East Weymouth or Easy Weymouth? Did I write Easy? East Weymouth. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, that would be the East Weymouth ball away. <laughs> I don't know how easy it is there. We'll have to ask him. Yeah, 
guess I better uh, adjust my spell check on the word processor at home, Dick. And a 10 box. Yeah, we'll correct that for you. There you go. We were talking last week about his hobby of bike riding and how he rides from Weymouth down to the Cape Cod Canal. And talk about what bike riding can do for you in terms of stamina and building up strength in your legs and how key leg strength is to the success of a bowler. And you can't underestimate uh, the importance of having leg strength in this game because you're constantly bending and stooping and sliding and uh, generally the legs are the first thing to go if you don't stay in shape as far as bowling goes. A little more critical with 10 pin perhaps because the equipment is so much heavier. But keep the treadmill handy during the cold weather if you want to stay in shape. First mark of the match for Neil Goslin. And you'll watch it again as he used the deadwood to his advantage and slid it right over. As avid as a bike rider Bob Whitcomb is, Neil Goslin is a golfer. Mm -hmm. He'll be heading down to Hilton Head next month to break in a new set of golf clubs that his girlfriend just gave him. He was telling me before the match, it's a new fat shaft club he was describing to me, which he's excited about. 38 through four and a nine pin lead for Bob Whitcomb. I guess that's a girlfriend you keep around for a while if she's uh, buying you golf clubs. surrounded the nine pin but the nine pin refused to go and that wood way out front could pose a problem as Whitcomb surveys the situation second mark of the first string for Bob Whitcomb Bob works in quality control in Stoughton Steel, which is right next door to Weymouth. And if indeed he wins today, he'll face Scott Creighton, who was a fellow employee at Stoughton Steel with him. You never know what matchup stick that you're going to get on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Of course, everybody knows the Morgan Morgan brother connection. But there's other kinds of connections like working together or growing up together. A lot of these, uh, yeah, it's a pretty closely knit fraternity. Candlepin bowling is. Spare opportunity here for Neil Goslin. And he cashes in. Mentioned Peter Flynn a little earlier as having beaten Neil Goslin in a past tournament of champions. People may be wondering where Peter Flynn is. He's been out of the game for a number of years because of some medical difficulties. He nearly lost his life, actually, but uh, was able to make a good recovery and is out of the game at this point, and he's certainly missed because he was one of the fiery competitors. What a left-handed fireball thrower he was. Goslin missing the head pin in his spare opportunity. Picks up a 10 box. Whitcomb is working on a double mark, a chance for bonus money. Last week, we did not give away any bonus money.
And this time he stays away from the split. And oh. has Wood set up. Well, <laughs> that's pretty good wood, I'd say. Could have been better if that angled yeah. off a little bit differently, but. Uh, didn't help him out. Missed the object pin, unfortunately. I think he could have had it almost anywhere he would have hit it, except there. And a nine box. You can put the bonus money back in your wallet, Michael. It's safe for another couple of boxes anyway. Love to give it away. I mean, I have so much money to begin with, I just don't need it. Well, $975 for three strikes in a row. As Bob Whitcomb buried that one. A feat that nobody's uh, equaled since Gary Carrington last fall. And we'll see him again later in the spring tournament of champions. And where does Mike Morin make all of that money, you ask? <laughs> of course, as an afternoon personality at WZID FM 95.7. Every afternoon. Thank you. Michael will take a ride home with you. Don't know if you know this, Michael, but a former WZID engineer hit the Tri-State Megabucks for a couple of million dollars last week. I read the story. I didn't realize that uh, he... Bob Malloy, sure. I'm kidding. He's got a sound business, yeah. I think, right? Yeah, sure does. In the old building that housed WZID at the, sure. at the circle there is where Bob Malloy's sound business is. Bob was an engineer at WKBR and WZID back when I was working there, back many, many moons ago. Well, the question is, have you maintained your very close relationship you mean, with... You mean with my best friend, Bob? Yeah, your best friend, Bob. <laughs> We were like brothers. Well, we'll find out. Let's check the will. I think he and his wife are going to continue working in their respective fields. Absolutely. Bob's one of the good guys. Real happy for him. But he went two million, three million? 2.4. 2.4. I can hardly get by on that these days. Seven inside the strike for Bob Whitcomb. Has a 26 pin lead in the match. <laughs> 10 the hard way. He had a spare last week by bringing the ball back into play like yes, that. Yes, and it was a split as well, I think. Maybe the 4 7 10. In the pocket, and everything blows right by the eight pin. The eight pin stands defiantly. Well, Neil Goslin with an opportunity now to make it a little closer. As Whitcomb finishes the string with two 10 boxes and a 129 for a string. And Neil needs at least a pair of marks to pull within seven or eight pins of Bob Whitcomb. The 10 pin still stands. Good spare for Goslin. His third mark of the game. Four horsemen on the right side, eight pin in the back.
And that'll be a 20 some pin lead for Bob Whitcomb going into the second string. Nine box and a 107 and a 22 pin lead for Bob Whitcomb. After one of our match here at Lita Lanes on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV 50. Participate every week on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV 50 by sending a postcard in, and you'll be eligible to be involved in our bonus ball contest. Send your postcard to Lita Lanes, 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, 03063. Pick a number from 1 to 10. Make sure your name, address, and the number. 1 through 10 is on the postcard. Send it off to Lita Lanes, 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, 03063. And after every match, our winning bowler will bowl a ball. And it could be your postcard that is drawn. We'll try to match it up with the number of pins he knocks over. And if it does, in fact, match, you'll be a cash prize winner. Otherwise, you'll win a set of mugs from NNR Trophy in Winchenden, Massachusetts. A second postcard is drawn. And we will uh, award 10 free strings of bowling to Lita Lanes in Nashua. So first to bowl in our second string will be Neil Goslin from Lynn, Massachusetts. A 107 first string for Neil. And he trails by 22 pins. Buy it. Threw it by it twice. Nine first Bosch Neil Goslin. That first string total of 98 is incorrect. We'll get it squared away for you. It was a 107 first string for Neil Goslin. Four and the six. And Neil's trying to figure out a way how to get it over there. The wood could help if it'll fit through. He didn't play it the way I would have played it, but I probably wouldn't have made it either. Well, I've been looking at the, the board there for the weeks you've been coming in and qualifying, and you've just been missing the cut there, Dick. You challenging me? <laughs> Is that a challenge? <laughs> Put some of that WZID money on the table here, pal. You, if we ever got out there, it would be the slowest hour in the history of television. <laughs> hey, you want to you want to challenge me after I hit the next Powerball lottery when there's some serious dough at stake? There's a spare for Bob Whitcomb. Watch it again. Great action, especially with the wood that was situated in the middle. But he only fills it with a four. A little too full on that spare attempt. Three, four, six, seven. Still remain. Three pins added to his lead. Two and the seven. It's called a fit split. Get it just right on the left-hand side of the object pin. You can deflect it over to the seven. Just like that. Well done. And a spare for Neil Goslin. Watch it again. 
Played perfectly by Neal. And a five pin fill. Neil tried to stare it down. Couldn't quite get it to go. I don't think that wood's going to have enough momentum on it to cause any any damage. Forty four through four. Solid pocket shot and another solid eight pin. Just want to mention real quickly a uh, cattle pin doubles tournament that the uh, bowlers may be interested in looking into as you're watching this as it runs for the first time on the 22nd of March. On the 27th, 28th, and 29th, the 16th annual Pepsi Elimination Doubles Handicap Tournament with some serious money at stake. Dick, it's a $2,000 guaranteed first prize. Your team must not exceed a 225 average. If you're interested in the 16th annual Elimination Doubles Handicap Tournament at the Londonderry Bowling Center, March 27th, 28th, and 29th, the number to call would be area code 603. There's a strike. 603-434-0209. A strike inside the spare for Bob Whitcomb. Four boxes complete. Second string. Whitcomb in the lead. Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNDS TV 50. the halfway point of our match here this afternoon with Neil Goslin and Bob Whitcomb. Whitcomb in the lead by about 30 pins plus. He's working on a strike. This is Neil Goslin answering the strike with a strike. That's the way to respond. Nice to come out of the commercial break firing with all guns blazing. Four pin last to go. it by the head pin that time. He's had difficulty putting two good boxes together back to back. Hasn't happened yet. I want to thank Ray Simino, the proprietor of Lita Lanes, for his hospitality week after week. Manager Sean Howard, Chris Beauvert works the scoreboard at Lita Lanes, and they always go out of their way to make the crowd that comes to our taping sessions comfortable at Lita Lanes, providing elevated seating, providing a big screen TV down to our left on the far side so people can see the replays and get a better angle on the shots. Just a nice atmosphere and a well run operation at Lita Lanes in Nashua. Exit 7 if you're heading north, 7W if you're heading north on the Everett Turnpike. Exit 8 if you're heading south from Manchester. Lita Lanes on Amherst Street in Nashua. As the sign outside says when you're driving in, and it brings back memories of the Don Gillis Show on Channel 5, Candlepin Bowling is fun for all ages. to get your children started in the game. They've got a wonderful junior program here. Busy with kids all day Saturday. Of course, it's not as inexpensive as it was when we were uh, youngsters, Dick, when you could bowl three games for a dollar. I used to, I can date you on that one. I used to go six for a buck. Six for a buck. Oh, sure. Recreation lanes in Worcester used to have specials once in a time, once in a while, six, six mm. strings for a buck. We used to be there. We used to spend all day there. We'll never see those days again. Ten box for Whitcomb and a 78 through six. He's added 10 pins to his lead. He leads the match by 32 pins. 
Once again, Goslin missing the head pin. Our runner up today is going to go home with $175. And our winner goes on next week to meet Scott Creighton, also from the uh, South Shore area of Massachusetts. The 1710 with a piece of wood, and he punches the one right straight through. Those were great days when we used to bowl just about every Saturday in Worcester growing up. Granted, there were fewer things for kids to do no back then. I don't know if we would have been as enthusiastic about bowling as I know you were, and I certainly was, had there been a lot of other things to do. <laughs> it, that was not what you would call a textbook spare. <laughs> But I can assure you that Neil Goslin will take it. Right in the pocket, leaving the 5 7. Later on, when I was in high school, we played in a league at the Colonial Lanes on Mill Street in Worcester. It was a Sunday league. So you weren't into Roman Greco wrestling or anything like that? No, but the thing I remember about it is being a, a great football fan back then, as I was and still am. His Sundays, of course, was NFL days. And he used to have a TV set over in the corner. We used to go watch the Giants. That's before the, you're talking, <laughs> before the Patriots took over New England. There's now a lot of today's state-of-the-art bowling centers have uh, TV monitors above all the lanes that double as uh, electronic scoreboards. And you can watch the game sometimes while you bowl. At three bucks a string. <laughs> Some places, not everywhere. He played it perfectly, didn't he? What a great shot that was. Mm. The crowd ooing and eyeing here at Lita Lanes. And another 10 box. Watch how close he comes. He played it just about as well as he could have played it. And still left the seven pin standing. Now Goslin working on a spare. $975 in the triple strike carryover jackpot. Once again, Neil missed the head pin, but gets a good fall with eight and a spare lead. He's really yet to find his groove. Seems like he's still fishing just a little bit. That doesn't help. Just pick the head pin right off. for Goslin with one box to go. He had a 107 first string. And then you go back and you look at the roll-off totals, and he had a 664 for five strings. Well, that's what Jim Orlandi did last week. Finishing strong. Day. Yeah. Well, this next shot, gang, is worth 975 bucks. Watch it again. So it's been rather lackluster to this point, but all of a sudden, everybody's on the edge of their seat. This will be a $975 shot for Neil Goslin from Lynn, Massachusetts. Hold your breath. He gave it a shot, didn't he? He was right on the head pin. 131. 
What did he make up a lot of real estate in there in the last uh, frame, the last uh, last box? <laughs> that 975 bucks is still there for Bob Whitcomb. Watch it again. This one takes a while. It was in the pocket, but now they start to tumble. The dominoes. There they go. This time he puts a spread eagle. Again, right on the head pin, though. A matter of centimeters. Well, he'll take a lead into the third and final game, but not the kind of lead that I'm sure he would have enjoyed thanks to the double strike by Neil Gosselin. He finished strong with a 125, a 16-pin lead in the match for Bob Whitcomb as we head to our third string from Lita Lanes in Nashua as Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNDS TV 50. This is our sixth series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Thus far, five bowlers have advanced to our Tournament of Champions. On our way to having two more join that group of five, headed by Gary Carrington, as you can see, with an astronomical 455 triple to get in. Mike Morgan's at 420, and the remaining three include Nashawan Joe Ashline, Rich Clark, who won last week, and Rich Hallis two series ago. So this is our sixth ladder, as Dick mentioned, and we'll have a total of seven by the time we get into the Spring Tournament of Champions. And Bob Whitcomb is the first to bowl in our third string he has a 16 pin lead over Neil Goslin. Goslin finishing with a double strike in the 10th frame to make things a little bit closer. And Whitcomb missing the spare opportunity. And a nine box. Next time you're in the area near Lita Lanes in Nashville, why not stop by Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge at 350 Amherst Street, right next door to Lita Lanes. No matter what time of day you may be watching this show, it airs at noon, it airs several other times during the, during the week. Anytime's a good time to stop by the Kahala Chinese Restaurant for lunch or dinner. Open seven days a week. Terrific takeout, a wonderful luncheon buffet that we enjoy every time we're at Lita Lanes. Entertainment on the weekends, a lovely banquet facility. See Andy Moner Arsani at Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge, right next door to Lita Lange at 350 Amherst Street, Route 101A in Nashua. Again, if you're headed north on the Everett Turnpike, you take exit 7W. If you're coming from the Manchester area, it's exit 8. You'll find it right next door to Lita Lanes, the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge. The phone number is 603-889-5200. 603-889-5200. Do what we do from WNDS TV 50. Head to the Kahala Chinese restaurant next door to Lita Lanes. Well, we had that uh, ball spinning on the deck. You could have actually read the whole Kahala menu, I think, <laughs> in the time that we waited. Neil Goslin with an opportunity now that Wickham opened in his first two boxes. Neil has an opportunity to make things a little bit closer. Neil has three children, a daughter Brandy, son Neil Jr., and a daughter Sherry. He also made sure to point out to me, Mike, when he was looking over his bio sheet at the, before the match that the correct spelling of his daughter's name is S-H-E-R-I. <laughs> Ten blocks. He is an inspector at GE in Lynn. And he walked away from that one as soon as he threw it. But above everything else, he loves his golf game. Boy, he buried it in the pocket. But the 10 pin would have none of it. That'll be a nine, a nine box. Yep. Waved it off. Hit the uh, deadwood in the gutter. 
before going back on the deck and taking out the tent. Second pocket hit for Whitcomb. Six pin drop. The winner of this match will advance to take on Scott Creighton next week. All Scott did was bowl a 681. Will it go? Imagine bowling a 681 five game series and finishing second. <laughs> hmm. I'd be thrilled to get 681 ever. 10 bucks. A lot of action around that five pin and the Deadwood sweeps white red right around it and leaves it standing. Horseman plus one. Bob Whitcomb lists his status as single and available. Did he want you to screen applicants or anything like that? Yes, uh, I'll be taking a look at the uh, interested suitors for Mr. Whitcomb. <laughs> Nine bucks. 38 through four. Neither bowler able to mark thus far in the third string. We've not given away any bonus money. We didn't last week either. Well, we tried to give away $975 at the end of last string. Neil Goslin had two strikes lined up. Couldn't get that third. And Neil's trying to make a run out of the match. Well, the wood should help him. Doesn't have any choice. He's got to use it. It's a matter of where is he going to hit it. And that was not the place to of hit it. Of all places to hit it, that mm -hmm. was the only place he could hit it and not make the spare. Nine bucks. That could come back to haunt him looking back on this match. A very makeable spare right there. right through the middle. Just a little too full on the first ball and the second ball. Now he's just gonna have to hope for eight. Taking out the three on the left. Well, surprise. That's a heck of a shot. We are e even in the third string. A 16-point pin lead in the match for Bob Whitcomb over Neil Goslin. Six boxes to go as Candlepin stars and strikes heads down the home stretch on WNDS TV 50. A 16-pin lead for Bob Whitcomb over Neil Goslin with six boxes to go on our third and final game of this match between these two fine bowlers. The winner advancing to take on second seed Scott Creighton next week. This is our sixth step, step ladder series. We will have seven. And seven champions that will participate in our tournament of champions at the end of the season. With our tournament of champions over six weeks. Which should be a lot of fun. Well, that would turn perfectly, and of all pins still standing, it's the 10 pin. That wasn't the one he thought he was going to leave. No. Executed nicely. That'll be a nine box for Bob Whitcomb as that pin, that ball hit the pin in the gutter as well. Shades of last week where the match stayed very close and was decided indeed in the ninth and 10th frames of the third string, as this one appears to be headed as well. well Bob was on the head pin that time, but really doesn't have a lot to show for it. A tough spare leave. He has a 47 half. Neither bowl are setting Lita Lane's on fire here in this third string. How's that for a spare? 
see the bowlers high five each other after Whitcomb pulled one out of the hat. Well, anything can happen with that Deadwood. You just never know which way it's going to fly. Watch out, watch out. <laughs> there it goes. Watch it again. Never give up on that Deadwood. There it goes. And down it goes. Another mark here, and we're going to have a nearly even match. He'd like that pin to go. There it goes. <laughs> yeah, this is when you can't miss when you get that kind of a break. Now, just as I said, the bowlers were not setting the little lanes on yeah. fire. They took that to heart, I think, Dick. Beauty. Despair inside the strike. Phil and an awful looking configuration. And this match is virtually even. Eight through seven for Bob Whitcomb. Now a spare opportunity for Whitcomb. Missed the head pin. And that ball's got a bit of a tail from right to left, right at the end, and cost him on that shot. Big opportunity for Neil Goslin, who's got some momentum going with a back-to-back -back mark situation. Maybe our first bonus money situation here for this game. First in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's true. Haven't had to reach into our pockets uh, recently. Well, he didn't leave himself an easy shot. Again, right on the head pin, but a little too full. Box to box, a three pin differential right now in the match. <laughs> Crowd got revved up on that spare shot. Nine box. He's gained back 14 of the 16. He's up against a 10 box. A little better positioning of that ball. Uh, not quite as full, but he didn't get the wall action he had hoped with the uh, four remaining pins still. Four pin lead in the match for Whitcomb. Still a four pin lead in the match. Those are the ones that come back to haunt you in your dreams at night when you realize how close you were and you count up the number of times you've missed those easy uh, shots. Heading down the home stretch, Whitcomb in the pocket. The 4 7 10 with no wood. Opting for the wall shot versus the cut shot, which is probably the higher percentage way to play that spare. He's going to force 
Neil Goslin to mark in the last two frames. And if he marks here, Neil will need a couple of marks. Big one. Strong finish for Whitcomb. Watch it again as he went to the Brooklyn side and just got the 10 pin to go. A little love tap from, I think, the six. Six. Goslin needs a 122 to tie. Two marks and decent fills, and he should do it. Two double woods on the deck. Sleepers makes it tough. Oh, man. What a clutch spare for Neil Goslin. He needs 122. He needs a mark. Well, he broke up the split. Well, this is it. He needs the mark. He needs to make this shot. The whole match comes down to this. 4 7 spin. Needs to make this in a four pin fill. And he missed it. Bob Whitcomb will advance. Bob Whitcomb will be the winner. We will come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua to meet our bowlers as Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNDS TV 50 with Whitcomb the winner. Final score was Bob Whitcomb 360, Neil Goslin 356. Neil standing right here. You made a run at it. I gave it a shot, but um, Bob threw that big strike in the 10th, and that, that kind of made it tough on me, make two marks at the end. I missed one, but he threw a good strike. That it was one. a good close match, a four-pin differential. Here's a check for $175. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We look Thank forward to seeing you again. Neil Goslin from Lynn, Massachusetts. Now our winner, Bob Whitcomb, will throw a ball for the bonus ball contest. It is a seven, and Mike Morin will draw a postcard out of the bin Should here at Lita Lane. So let's see if we can get a seven out of here. You do pull a seven when somebody throws a three. All right, here we go. There's one. First card is, look at the number on it. It's a seven. It's a seven. It's Francis Clark from Concord, New Hampshire. Francis wins $50 for our bonus ball contest. And our second card pulled out of the bin by Mike will win 10 free strings of bowling at Lita Lanes. This is Mrs. James Grasso of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Congratulations to you as well. And congratulations to Bob. Strong finish. Yes, yeah, the strike came right at the right time and missed a few spares, but uh, I lucked out in the end again. Neil missed a spare the last box, so I lucked out. Well, you're climbing up the ladder. We'll see you again next week. Congratulations again. Bob Whitkin from Weymouth, Massachusetts. Up the ladder we go. Scott Creighton next week, and these guys work together. They're good friends. It should be a good match, so join us.